Many and strange are the universes that drift like bubbles in the foam upon the river of time. Alone in its little cosmos, turning the same face always toward Trilorn, its solitary sun, Shervain's world was the last and the strangest jest of the maker of the stars. All the inhabitants of this world, which knows no night, live in the narrow belt between the burning heat of the firelands and the insufferable cold of the shadowlands. All that is, until now. Shervain ordered the erection of this village deep in the shadowlands to house his workmen. He has vowed to unravel the greatest mystery of his world and has invited you from your world to join him. Come, visitor, walk the narrow streets with us as Sci-Fi Radio presents our adaptation of Arthur C. Clarke's short story, The Wall of Darkness. You must have just arrived from the city. I am Urgan. Surveyne's been expecting you. Ah, uh, yes, yes. The fire will feel good after your long journey. You had little trouble with the mountain pass, I trust. Two long years to build that road. Did you know that? Two years. But it is a fine road, is it not, visitor? On a good day, when Trelorn is high, you can see the wall from there. Not like today, cold and too late in the summer for seeing far. In any case, there is little but the wall to see. No flowers here, too cold for them as well, or any other growing thing. And this is summer. Here, uh, an another piece of wood. It came all the way from the city. But then, so did you. Ah, that's better. Well, there it is then. The wall. Quite a sight, isn't it? Glossy black, like polished glass, ten times higher than a man, and belting our world in each direction forever. And behind it is the land in which we lived before our births. Oh, yes, it is true. Of course, there are those who choose to believe it was built by the first dynasty, built so long ago that no one remembers why or how. They believe we have, over the years, forgotten the wondrous technology... And how that long ago did you forget your manners, Ergan? Mm -hmm. Ergan is one of our leading philosophers' visitor, and I am known as Grail. Here, I have brought something to warm your insides. We are both, Ergan and I, scholars of the wall. But as it often is with friends, we fail to share the same convictions of the origin and purpose of the wall. My colleague continues to cling to the ancient belief that only madness lies behind the wall, that it is a, a mystical thing, little more than a gigantic puzzle, a challenge to the mind of man. <laughs> Ergan, our visitor, did not ride this far into the Shadowland to listen as two old men argue over a question which may soon be answered. You came to see the wall, to touch it, to experience it, and so you shall. When you are warm, visitor, I will take you there. We can go on foot. It is not far. Not as far as it looks. You will join us, of course, Ergan. If only to keep you from frightening our guest with your ramblings of madness. Shervain is not one to gamble his sanity. Be assured of that. There is only one thing waiting behind the wall, or so the legends say, and that is madness. Of our activities and situations prior to our birth, we know nothing. And we know that we know nothing. Or at least I do. In any case, visitor, you will know that you have seen the wall, greatest mystery of our world. Well, if we're ready, let us begin. As Grail said, the wall is not as far as it looks. Perhaps we shall be fortunate enough to find Braildon. 
He is the architect of Chervain's dream or folly. Chervain and Brailden were children together, you know. Isn't that Brailden near the base of the great stairway? Brailden, the visitor is with us. Come then. You could not have arrived at a better time. Chervain ascends today. And his mind is lost to us forever. It is good of you to come and see for yourselves what we have done. Few believe until they see it with their own eyes. To think when I first saw your plans, Brailden, how I doubted your ability. But why have you stopped short of the top? Chervain wants to be the only one to make the final ascent. As a boy, he believed your tales of madness, Grail. The last stage will be by a lifting machine on the highest platform. And yes, there may be danger. That is why he intends to go alone. If the wall was built to keep something from our world, it will still be impassable from the other side. Or at least it should be. We have thought of that. If there is a need, the ramp can be destroyed in a moment by explosives at selected spots. All these years of work. And now it is nearly done. Completed. Yes, it has taken much time and much effort. But now, the moment Chervain and I have waited for draws near. The end to this timeless mystery. Soon, we will know. But at such great expense. Grail, you forget that Chervain has more wealth than any other man in this world. The raw materials were here. The very rocks of these dark mountains have now become steps. Steps which will lead us to the truth. On that, Grail, can anyone place too high a price? I do not forget, Brailton. But I remember well his father, Cheval, and the day he brought his young son to the Shadowland. Chervain was just a boy visitor, a lad barely 15 years old, when the three of us rode together into the It is as you have been told, my son. Nothing lives in this desolate place. It's because Trelorne's light cannot warm the land. Isn't that right, Grail? Grail says that all life on our world would perish in an instant without Trelorne. And what else has he taught you, Chervain? What has your old master taught you of the wall? Grail has said that long ago, men tried to understand the wall and its purpose, to learn its secret, and all failed. All who tried were consumed by mystery and lost their ability to reason. They became mad. <laughs> is that how it is, Grail? Has time removed us so far from our ancestors of the first dynasty that we now have no hope of understanding their work without risking sanity? <laughs> have we slipped so far? We have so little proof that the first dynasty built the wall, Serval. Mm, you should take leave of your studies occasionally, Grail. Get away from the cold walls of the university and travel our world more. Perhaps you would discover that the wall is not the only mystery worth our consideration. Experience is an excellent first step on the path to true understanding, old friend. As you say, Cheval. Is that why we have come here, Father? To gain a new experience? Am I going to see the wall? Will I not go mad with the sight of it? <laughs> Chervain, Chervain. So many questions. If you question your teacher as you do your father, it is no wonder the Grail has no time for travels. Whoa! This is as far as we can safely take the animals. We must now go the remainder of the distance on foot. Will it be far, Father? Are we close to the wall now? We are just climbing that ridge, Chervain. Grail, I want you to stay here with our animals. As you wish, Chervain. Come, Chervain, and be careful. These rocks can shift underfoot. Look out as far as you can, my son, and tell me, what do you see? I see no life here, Father. There is nothing here, only the dark gray rocks and even darker shadows. Now let your eye move toward the far horizon. Tell me what you see there. A line. A, a thin line which is blacker than the sky. Father, is that... Is that... The wall? Yes, my son. The greatest mystery of our world. As a younger man, I crossed this lifeless plane and touched its surface, tried to understand it. And in time, when you were older, so shall you. And did you understand, Father? 
There's some weather brewing. The Shadowland is no place to be in the open during a storm. Come, Shervain. We must return home now. Grail, prepare the animals. A storm is coming. We rode hard that day, visitor. It was the last time we rode together. Soon the young Shervain left my tutoring to continue his studies. It was during that time the tragedy which provided him with such wealth occurred. His entire family was swept away by the strangest of accidents. Lightning from a storm out of season struck Cherval's great house, bringing it down, crushing the life from all those who were within. Poor Cherval, he was still at the university. I carried the tragic news to him myself. But that was long ago, visitor. You did not travel this far into the Shadowland to hear sad stories. Or look at my drawings. You came to experience the wall. And by the first dynasty, it is time you did. Come, visitor. Grail, Ergan, follow me, please. The wall is not constructed of matter as we know it, visitor. You will see it is a mystical thing, not of this world. Place your hand here, against its surface. See how cold it is. Much colder than it should be, even in this place. Notice the texture, as if you are not really touching a solid substance at all. You see, there is a force, something unseen, which prevents your touch, protects the wall. It is that thin barrier that you feel... For all of the ages it has stood in this place, there is no sign of wear. And listen, sound, all sounds seem to be less distinct the closer you get to the wall, as if they were absorbed by it. Oh, to know how they built it. This wall was not built at all. It was created. Perhaps you are right, Ergan, but there are ancient buildings in my land which react in much the same way as the wall. We know that they are from the first dynasty. Now, if their engineers could build ships of metal that could cross the ocean to the firelands, why not a wall such as this? Is that not so, visitor? Myths. Ships that fly and ships that defy the searing rays of Trelorn. A, a legacy of legends from the first dynasty. Why would these engineers build such a wall? What are they keeping us from? Or what are they keeping from us? I will tell you when I return from the other side. Sure, sure. Hey. I've come to tell you that the lifting machine is almost ready. It is time. We must go to the ramp. You will not reconsider? Ergan, I saw the wall for the first time in my life from those distant mountains at the edge of the Shadowland with Cherval, my father. Today, I will have its truth. Or not, as Caron, creator of the world... Wishes. If I were a younger man, perhaps I would ask to go with you, Shervain. I know, old friend. But you must stay with Brailden. He will ensure the destruction of the ramp should the wall's secret present any threat to our people. And you, visitor, you have come this far. I wish you to join me and continue your journey. You appear brave enough. The lifting platform has been strongly constructed. He will hold us both. Do not refuse, Sir Vane Visitor. The opportunity he has offered you... Is one I would avoid. Thank you. <laughs> Visitor, you agree then? Good. We shall brave the wall together. We're nearly to the highest platform now. Yes. Yes, I can see the lift. Carefully, Visitor. We're almost there. Nearly there. Stay close to the wall. Ah. Now, on to the lift. Stand still, visitor. I will signal to raise the platform. Watch your balance. We are ready! Now, raise it! As a boy, I laughed at the legend. For I had the mind of a child and lacked reason. Now I have reason, but in my heart I fear the legends at this moment more than ever. It is good that you are here, visitor. What monstrous thing, what creature may be lurking on the other side? Did the first dynasty create the wall to protect us? And protect us from what? 
We're almost to the top. We can see over the wall. I can see. But I don't understand. This... This can't be. This can't. Look. It seems... It seems to... To stretch on forever. I don't understand. I... I see no sign of danger here, but perhaps danger will discover us. Tell Brailden that he is to come to the top. To come up here and wait for our return. That everything is all right. That the visitor and I are going on. There. There is nothing to fear. I will lead the way. Stay close to me. This wall is gigantic. It's a featureless plain. It seems to rush toward the horizon, spreading as ink might spill from a bottle. Spreading out to the very edge of the world. Hiding from us in its own cloak of black cloth. So tight is the weave that even the light is kept at bay. It is so dark. Look! Our shadows! Even our shadows have abandoned us. What manner of place is this? Look behind us. Even Trelorn cannot penetrate here. Our great sun is now nothing more than a pale disk. A dim street lamp beset by a ghostly fog. Ah, but a lamp nevertheless. A lamp which can guide us. If we keep Trelorn in sight, we cannot become lost in this place. We will keep it behind us. It will be a beacon for our return. Come, visitor. We must soon reach the other side. How could we have lost what the engineers of the first dynasty knew? This, this distortion, this control of matter. There is no monster here, no madness, no souls waiting to be born, or souls now dead. There is nothing in this place. There is nothing here. Only darkness. A wall of darkness. <laughs> it is really not a wall. It is so strange. <gasps> Stop. Behind us, visitor. Trelawn. It has changed. The sun has grown smaller. We cannot have gone so far in so short a time as to leave the sun behind. Ah, this accursed place! It will not defeat us. Trelorn is still our beacon back to the world we know. But we must watch it closely. Now, we must not lose sight of it, or we will be doomed to wander here in darkness, perhaps forever. Come, but keep sight of Trelorn. These tricks with sound, it would seem to treat light in much the same manner. Does the wall also challenge time? Capture and distort time itself? I wonder. The further we move from the edge, the lower Trelawn rests in the sky, yet I detect no slope, no gradual incline that could account for what our eyes have told us. But our sun continues to set. It is puzzling. Trelorn is nearly gone now. See, visitor? Only a dim glow remains to mark the point where we enter this place and our safety. But we must go on. Just a little further. I know the answer is here. We have come so far. We must find it. <gasps> there! There! Ahead of us! You can see it! Do you see another light? It's only the faintest of glimmers on the horizon, but it is there. I'm sure of it. It must be the far edge. We can 
see the other side, visitor. We will have our answer. The Lord has set behind us, but now we have a new light to guide us. And this mystery at last will soon end. What do you suppose it is? One of their great cities, perhaps? That is lighting our way now? I wonder what they will be like, these people from across the wall. Friendly as you are, I'm sure. They may have questioned the wall as we have. Wait. Do you see it? The light. The light. Now it is above the wall's edge. As we near it, it ascends into this dark sky, even as Trelorn descended. Could it be Trelorn's twin? Could this world have two suns? Two lands? Yes, each with its own sun, separated for long eons of time by the wall? Cautiously now, slowly. It looks much the same as Trelorn, see? The nearer we come to the wall's edge, the brighter this new sun becomes. I wonder if their lands are as fair as ours, if their cities are as great. Is their ocean as lovely as the one we know? I'm certain that they will welcome us, visitor, much as we would welcome them if they had crossed the wall first. <sighs> We've done it. Do you see the edge? And there, in the distance, there are mountains here, too. We are the first to cross the wall in thousands of years, perhaps in all eternity. We have at least one of its secrets. We will be the first to meet our brothers that this infernal structure has kept from us through all the centuries. <sighs> the light. We're coming out of the darkness and we can see clearly once again. A new world. Those distant mountains. Look at them. Look at them. Why, they're so very much like the ones on our side of the world. They are as cold and gray to the eye as the lifeless crags of our own shadow land. Whoop! Do not rush to the edge, visitor. To slip on this smooth surface and risk a fall now after all this way. Oh, slowly. Slowly now. I can see more of this side of the world now. There's a large plain, a span of open land which stretches from the wall to those far mountains. I... I see... I see... There is a town here. I, I see... I see... Chervain, what did you find? Chervain! Grail, Chervain said to me, along the line of the wall, our universe comes to an end, and yet it does not end. What do you think he meant? I now believe that there was no boundary, nothing to stop one from going onward before the wall was built. It would seem that the wall itself is indeed a man-made barrier, sharing perhaps the same properties of the space in which it lies. If this is true, those vague properties were always there, and the wall has added nothing to them. Do you understand? Our visitor might, but I'm afraid I do not. Mm -hmm. Let me see if I can simplify the concept. Consider this plain sheet of paper, then. Mm -hmm. It has, of course, two sides. That is obvious, Grail, but what Can is... you imagine a sheet such as this that has but one side? One side? That's impossible. Ridiculous. But is it? In our age, for whatever reasons the past is hidden, we cannot match the intellects of the First Dynasty. But what their minds could easily grasp directly, we can approach by analogy. This simple trick may help you to glimpse the truth, Brailden, and you too, visitor. 
If I bend this strip of paper, which I cut from the sheet, so that it forms a loop... You have a section of a cylinder, Grail, but you still have an inside and an outside, two surfaces. Correct, Brailden. But now both of you watch. If I bring the two ends together huh? and add a half twist, find the inside or outside now. I understand. Instead of two separate surfaces, it now forms a single continuous sheet, a one-sided surface. Something that at first seems utterly impossible. Yes, I thought you would understand. The symbol of the twisted loop is so common in the ancient religions, but over the long ages, its meaning had been completely lost to us. Your twisted loop, Grail, is a crude two-dimensional example of what must really occur in three. Crude, yes, but it is as near as our minds can ever get to the truth. May I feel your cup, visitor? Here, let me... I thank you, Brailden, for bringing our visitor back to the village. But why did you choose to stay with us? Chervain is still at the wall. There is one task yet to perform. Is there not? There is. I knew it must be done, but I did not wish, could not bear to see my work destroyed. Yes, of course. We will hear nothing this far from the wall. It will swallow this sound as it has all others. But there is something else on your mind, Brailden. Another question about the wall, perhaps? Your face, your expression, has failed to conceal your confusion very well. It is nothing, just a curious idea that continues to run about in my head. And that is? I accept what you have told me, but I still have this strange feeling that when Chervain drops his hand and the explosions perform their task... That another stairway, watched by another Chervain, will fall in identical ruins on the other side of the wall. That is an interesting idea, isn't it? But Chervain knows, as do you, that the wall has no other side. Our cast for Wall of Darkness featured Ken Page as Chervain, Howard Fisher as Ergon, Jerry Haynes as Grail, and Rick Spiegel as Brailden. Chervain as a boy was played by Bob Reed. The original story, Wall of Darkness, was written by Arthur C. Clarke and adapted for sci-fi radio by L.A. Jones. Our director was John O. Williams. All music and sound effects were created by Ron DiIulio at the studio of Audiovisual Associates in Euless, Texas. The series producers are Kevin Singer and Ron DiIulio. Support for Sci-Fi Radio has been provided by a grant from the Corporation for Public Broadcasting. This is James Edward Kerr inviting you to join me soon for our next venture into the imaginary worlds of Sci-Fi Radio.